Pat with Pat's to Sans God's Church of Love Online every Saturday. Join us. We have to remember who Jesus is. He is the head of all principalities and powers. All. And no matter what goes on in this world, baby cakes, no matter what happens in your life, he is the one you turn to because he is your one and only true friend in this life. Remember that. Now listen, go with me to Colossians chapter 2, starting at verse 6. As we have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. And Christ Jesus is the head of all principality and power so no matter what may be working against you in your life no matter what satan what kind of harm satan tries to bring against you you have supernatural protection you have supernatural provision you have supernatural favor you have a supernatural power working on your behalf protecting you from danger seen and unseen, providing for you left and right from all kind of, he will, listen, if God can bring water from a rock, which he did in the wilderness through Moses for the people of Israel, can he not bring a dollar bill from the sky? Can he not pay a bill that you didn't even pay for from your bank account? Can he not remove a debt that you just can't even pay? Can he not come to your rescue? Yes, he can. Why? Because Jesus is our friend. But as the song goes, what a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. What are you forgetting to carry to him in prayer? What are your normal fleshly solutions? You know you can grab a hold of this and grab a hold of that. And this one might come to your rescue. And that one... Might could, oh, that's horrible English, but I'm saying it for effect. But we forget to go to God. We forget to be specific. There are times when we need him to come to our rescue, not because we're in trouble based on an attack from the enemy, not because somebody did us wrong, but sometimes we need a rescue from the very thing we did wrong from the very decision we made that was not wise from something we need forgiveness for that's why god wants us to be honest with him you come to him with a humble and a contrite spirit a contrite heart you ask for forgiveness you confess where you went wrong you confess what you did wrong the poor judgment it may not be sinful it may just be bad timing or you got greedy and your your eyes were bigger than your belly so to speak you bit off more than you could chew and then you got to say lord clean my diaper i made a mess of things please forgive me and guess what that's all god wants And we're ready to hit the panic button like I did this week. And we want to run over here for help and run over there for help and run over hither, yonder, and dale. And we want to go all over the place trying to put out the fires that we started instead of going to God, (laughs) who not only forgives us for sins, but loads us with 
benefits because we forget what a friend we have in Jesus. In other words, y'all, Jesus has been, is, and will always be your best friend. That goes above and beyond your husband. That goes above and beyond your wife. That goes above and beyond your sister, your brother, your your friend down the street, your best friend from the time you were two years old. It goes above and beyond any friend on this earth. Jesus is your best friend, baby. Matter of fact, let me put it down to brass tacks. He is your only friend. No matter how good people are to you, they're being used by God to be a blessing, just like God uses you to be a blessing to other people. It all comes from God. <laughs> so trust him. Remember to look to the hills from whence cometh your help. Your help cometh from the Lord. You know, I was dealing with a recliner that I just purchased a week ago. And the recliner is a beautiful chair. It's very comfortable. And the reason I bought it is because I'm on this computer a lot. And my feet are hanging down to the ground. And I realized this computer is up in my bedroom now. I need a recliner up here. So what I did was I bought a recliner and elect I I like the manual ones, but I bought a, an electrical one, which costs more than what I would have wanted to pay. But I have a year to pay it off without interest. And I knew I needed that. That's a health call. That was not a luxury. That was for my health. Uh, that's why a lot of old folks get clots in their legs and go to their lungs and all that because they're in one position too long. Well, I take natokinase and I decided to treat myself to a recliner where my feet can be up when I'm on the computer instead of hanging down all day for hours. So when I got the recliner, I'm making a point, so stick with me on this. Don't let me lose you. When I got the recliner, I prayed before I got it. I asked the Lord if I could please get it because it's for my health, acknowledging him in all my ways so he can direct my path. So I got the recliner and I noticed it worked great, but it made pinging sounds. And this thing was so heavy. I had to bring my manual recliner upstairs to my bedroom because I could not lift. I'm by myself. I couldn't lift the bottom half of the recliner to bring it upstairs to my bedroom. I got the recliner into the living room and took the living room recliner and brought that upstairs to my bedroom. So now I can kick my feet up. But listen to this. Because of the sounds, it wasn't a lot, but it was enough to make me a little concerned. I called the company and requested a partial refund and sent them a video. Then I prayed and asked the Lord to give me favor. Well, they wanted to give me a percentage and I almost doubled that percentage. And I said, Lord, I didn't double it, but I almost, I asked the Lord to make them go for the amount I wanted back. And I let them know I'm taking a chance. It's too heavy for me to repack and send back. So I'm going to keep it, but I want a refund because I'm taking a chance and I don't want to spend a whole lot of money for something that's not going to last. So they went on and favored. God gave me favor and they blessed me with a refund, which was great. What I want to tell you is whatever you're dealing with, if you have the nerve to ask, even when you're asking people and you ask in faith, but your faith is in Christ, who is your best friend, your only friend, he can turn the hearts of people that don't even want to help you and they will bless you beyond their own desires because of the power 
that's in Christ Jesus because of the authority. Remember the word said he has authority over, it says here in verse 10, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Get in the habit of being bold enough to ask for things that normally you wouldn't be able to touch with a 10-foot pole. And trust that God will make a way for that thing to land in your hand. Trust that God will open a door that nobody wants to open for you. Trust that God will give you the job that you don't qualify for. Trust that you will get the ability to buy that car that you don't even qualify at a much lower interest rate than you even deserve. Why? The favor of God. And when you have your friend, your only friend, giving you favor, there is nothing that anybody can keep back from you. You can get that house that would normally sell for three or four hundred thousand dollars and God could land it in your lap for a hundred and fifty thousand. And you pay way less than you do for rent. You can get that car, you can get that machine that you need to start your business that you can't even begin to afford. And somebody can give you a call and say, I have a friend whose husband or whose sister passed away and they had a business and they don't want to be bothered with all this equipment. Would you like me to get you in touch with them? They might just give it to you. God can make a way where there is no way. Oh, if you just understood what a friend you have in Jesus. If you just understood that he sticks closer than a brother, if you understood the love and the goodness of God and that he knows the plans he has for you, plans to bless you and not harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future, you wouldn't be so quick to doubt. And my question to you is, why are you so full of fear? Why are you so doubtful? Why do you weigh the negative before you weigh the blessings? Why? Change your focus, y'all. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ask or think according to the power that works in us. Oh my God, ask God, please ask God to increase that power that works in you because God's got all the power to make things happen. But if you can't believe it and you can't see it, you won't experience the be it part. You gotta believe it and see it for you to be it. You got to raise your sights, y'all. Raise your eyesight. Look to the hills. Don't look to the fence that encircles your life. Don't look at all the limits. Don't look at the ceiling that's over your head. Look to the hills from whence cometh your help. Trust him, y'all. Obey his will. Stay in your lane. Observe what you know he wants in your life. Don't steer from it to the left or the right. Don't get caught up in 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 uh backup. So I gotta gotta have a backup because if this happens or if that happens, ain't no if nothing. If it happens, let it happen. Cause if it happens, it doesn't have God by surprise. God's already got the plan. He's already got the solution lined up. For the problems and the challenges you don't even see coming. Trust him, y'all. He's got you. He's got your back. He's your, he's got, the Bible calls him a rear reward. That means he's got your back. He goes ahead of you 
to make the crooked places smooth and the rough, excuse me, the crooked places straight and the rough places smooth, or as the King James calls it, plain. That means smooth. He smooths out all the rough edges, put it like that. And the bottom line is, <clears throat> what that means is he not only has your back, but he also has your destiny right in the palm of his hand. He knows the plans he has for you, y'all. So what are you going to do? What are you going to focus on? Maybe you're a creature of habit. Maybe you live around a bunch of worrisome people. Maybe you live around a bunch of fearful folk that always want to think of all the bad things that could go wrong. Maybe that's what the problem is. But you got to change your focus. You can't live according to the rudiments of this world. You can't live according to the belief systems of this world all the solutions this world has because God is your only solution. He can use the world, but you can't focus on the world. You have to focus on him. It's like this, and then I'm going to close. Imagine that you're standing at, at a store and you left your wallet at home and you've got all the groceries sitting up on the conveyor belt and you didn't know you didn't have your wallet until check this out until you realize that your pocket is void of the wallet no wallet no money no wallet no credit card no debit card no nothing so now you have no way to pay for all these groceries after you held up the line with this person running up your uh, the bill of your food and now you're standing there with her looking at you crazy or him looking at you crazy, waiting for you to pay. That's the time to pray, God, rescue me now, what do I do? Because that may be the only day in the whole two weeks you have to go to the store. Guess what? <laughs> if you have a mind to ask God and not hit the panic bill and say, oh, I gotta go home, I'm sorry, and just run out the store, Ask, stand there and ask God to bring you a rescuer. Don't be afraid to ask God for things that most people won't have the, the mind to even think of. Be creative with your prayers. If I mean, the devil's creative with your challenges, so you be creative with your prayers. Be bold. Come boldly to the throne of grace because you never know who might be there. One time when I was at the grocery store, I was short by 48 bucks, $48. And I was like, oh God, oh, I had no idea, Lord. Oh, Father, oh, Father, Father, I'm calling on his name. And I'm starting to apologize to the people in the line for now the woman's got to redo the whole thing. And the woman right behind me says, oh, don't worry about it. I'll pay for it. Just like that. Just like that. I never had that happen before. 48 bucks. I'm real good at calculating in my head. But that night I was extremely tired and I was just tossing it in my wagon and didn't realize how limited I really was. That woman paid 48 bucks so I could go home with everything I had in my basket. I'm telling you, when you have God's favor, you don't have to have all the ducats lined up in the row. You don't have to have every dollar bill and every 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 uh <laughs> every bank account and, and and everything filled up to the rim in order to meet all your needs. God said he will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. So guess what? You don't have enough money to pay the construction worker. God can lay it on that construction worker's heart to bless you because somebody may have blessed him with $50,000 and he's feeling real loving and he'll say, guess what? Don't worry about it. I'll do the extra work at no cost because you've been really good. You, I mean, God, <laughs> when he gives you favor, you don't need money. You just need him and his favor. That's it. So are you going to lean on your friend, your one and only true friend, or are you going to depend on the rudiments of this world? 
What are you going to do? Or are you going to depend on all your worries so you can come up with a backup plan that will never add up to God's backup? What are you going to do? And I leave you with that question. Think on that. Selah.